Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. It, which is your parents' commandments and instructions, it will keep you from an immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of a promiscuous woman. Don't lust after her beauty. Don't let her coy glances seduce you. So very captivating here. He's warning his son about a promiscuous woman, a woman who sleeps around with men, an immoral woman. So she has no morals. She does. She breaks God's laws. She breaks, you know, just morality in general. She cheats willfully. And then she he's telling her not to lust after her beauty. So beauty is deceitful, isn't it? And he's telling her, don't fall for that. And don't let her coy glances seduce you. Don't let that look. Watch out for those eyes. You know, we know when someone is flirting or looking at you, you know, in a seductive way. He says, stay away from that, son. Verse 26, for a prostitute will bring you to poverty, but sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life. Can a man scoop up a flame into his lap and not have his clothes catch on fire? Can he walk on hot coals and not blister his feet? So it is with the man who sleeps with another man's wife. He who embraces her will not go unpunished. So what's he saying here? Don't play with fire. If you play with fire, you're going to get burnt. And then it says here about he who sleeps with another man's wife will not go unpunished. Hebrews 13.4 says that the sexual immoral and the adulterer, God will judge. And then verse 30. Excuses might be found for a thief. Who steals because of his because he is starving. But if he is caught, he must repay seven times what he stole, even if he has to sell everything in his house. But the man who commits adultery is an utter fool, for he destroys himself. So verse 30, excuses being made for a thief, and then verse 32, he who commits adultery, he's basically saying here, there's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for adultery. He says, you're an utter fool if you do, and you're destroying yourself. 1 Corinthians 6.18 says that sexual morality is the only sin that we sin against our own bodies. So verse 32. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. The man who commits adultery is an utter fool, for he destroys himself. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says that, uh, that sexual morality is the only sin that sins against your own body. And the wages of sin is death. So here, as you read in verse 32, you're destroying yourself. How? Could it be perhaps you get some sexual disease? Could it be that perhaps you get a VD or some kind of sickness? Or the fact that God just is, according to Hebrews 13, 4, says that he will judge the adulterer? I don't know what it is, but he, according to this Bible verse, says that the man who commits adultery, number one, is a fool. Number two, he destroys himself. Verse 33, he, the man who commits adultery, will be wounded and disgraced. His shame will never be erased. So think about that right there. Wounded, disgraced. So talk about his family finding out. His children, losing respect with his children, with his family, with his in-laws. Oh, he's caught committing adultery. And then his shame will never be erased. Think about King David. Every time we talk about King David, what do we think about? We always talk about David's sin with Bathsheba. To this day, I don't know how long it's been. It's been thousands of years. And we're still talking about that sin. That sin has not been erased from, of, of all people, King David. And here he's telling you that if you adultery, number one, you're going to be wounded and disgraced. And that shame will never be erased. Verse 34, for the woman's jealous husband will be furious and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation nor be satisfied with the payoff of any size. So moral of the story here is just, just stay away from adultery. In chapter 5, I think he's talking about enjoying your wife, enjoying the breast of your wife. He's telling them to, to drink from his own cistern. You have a wife, enjoy her. And he's like, why go out to the world and fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman? So the best way to do that is to 
to avoid sexual morality is to stay far away from it as possible. And then for myself, and this is just for myself, I stay away from gyms. To me, it's eye candy, so I stay far away from it as, as much as possible. And I come from a past of adultery, so why would I put myself in a position like that again? Would I ever take a co-worker, a female co-worker to work? Never. Again, that's that, that's my own, that, that's my conviction. I would never do so. Why? To avoid any type of of image or, or from my past from, from creeping back up. But moral of the story here, avoid sexual morality, avoid adultery. He who commits adultery is an utter fool, and we certainly don't want to be that. And you don't want this shame for the rest of your life. It's always going to be there, and it will remain. You may be forgiven of your sins. We are going to go to heaven, but some will always remember you for, for the sin you've committed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome, uh, Brother Hector. Hector is uh, my BSF leader, as I was saying. Uh, Hello, Brother Hector. I I'm so sorry to come in late. Um, we've been running around, okay. you know, doing life. So, uh, but... No, apologies. appreciate the, no, the uh, invitation from Daryl. Yeah. Known Daryl several years now. Well, the thing here is from Miramar. So I was telling you, we have people, we have uh, worldwide uh, studies here. And on Saturday, awesome. we have another brother from Brazil that we awesome. have, to have here. So, but uh, yeah, Fonzie, you know, the scripture, you know, I've, I've known several brothers that have gotten caught up with uh, adultery. And, and this just writes their story. It just it didn't, end, didn't end very well, um, particularly my own father. And, um, you know, he he was involved with adultery. Um, he was actually, one night, he was, he's his mistress, he took her to work, and then he went out to see some other woman. So he was cheating on his mistress, right? Still married to my mom. And he got into a terrible accident and was paralyzed for the rest of his life. So wow. reading here, he will be wounded and disgraced. Wow. And he, because um, he should have, you know, I mean, you can get an animal get in an accident, but, you know, this is because of what, what we, if you were at home, you wouldn't have gotten in an accident. But, right. you know, accidents do happen. Um, but you know, I did. I went in in this hospital bed, you know, because he was paralyzed for thirty years. I, I asked him. I said, "Well, why did you do that? You know, you, he had a you know great job, had four children. We all went to college. We we lived in great homes and whatnot. And then, you know, then why why would you give it all away? You know, it could have been in your golden years. And you and my mom, you know, he goes, oh, he goes, do you understand? She she kept kept messing with me." It was his excuse. And so I'm looking, verse 25, don't let her coy glances seduce you. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, he, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, saved, but um, actually he did get saved before he died. But at the time, so, you know, having the word like this, don't don't let her coy glances seduce you. When my son, when he, um, he was in junior high, once. we went to the store and, um, and you know, came home and goes, "Hey, mom, you gotta watch out, dad. There's a couple of ladies looking at dad." I, you know, I was oblivious to it. I didn't see it because mm -hmm. don't let their coy glances seduce you. And if I was looking for it, now yeah, I might have saw that. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I mean, this whole <laughs> it's all these verses. I've just seen it happen to a lot of brothers that have gotten involved with adultery they lose their families they just go down in destruction it's one that uh, sexual sin is rooted in luck also and then we see in verse 25 do not lack after her duty in your heart mm. and nor let her ignore you with her eyelids and then if we see in that Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, we see about the sexual immorality also, adultery. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. Because of luck, it becomes that 
sexual immorality and adultery also. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. But I said to you that whoever looked at a woman to love for her, her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. For us, we see with our eyes and it became our love also. And then we want to commit that adultery. That according to that Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. Whosoever look at women to love for her has already committed the sin. Mm -hmm. There is what in verse 20, in Proverbs, verse, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20, My son, keep your father command, and do not forsake the law of your mother. Law of your mother. And then the Exodus chapter 20, verse 17, also we see, do not convict adultery. Do not convict, right? And then Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my command for the land of day and long life, and peace they will add to you. And do not forget. We have to keep his command to free from the adultery. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, first time we have to discuss about how we how much we have to meditate God's word. We have to study. We have to study God's word and we have to keep his law. His law is in his word. Yes. Yeah. Well, it starts with looking and that's why we we get into trouble because we don't the lord says if you lust it in your heart you lust it you've already committed adultery we don't think that's adultery right you know, when we look at pornography we don't think anything about it mm. the lord says if your eye causes you to sin gouge it out so we uh <laughs> you know, i know a very good friend of mine and he got committed adultery and a divorce and you know he was like, I don't know what happened. And next thing I knew, you know, I was trying to help her with her marriage, of course. Next thing I knew, we ended up at a hotel room in Vegas. And, you know, it was progressive. You know, he didn't start off that way. Mm -hmm. One thing led to another. That, that look, that coy glances. Yeah. You know, it can take a couple of years. And next thing you know, you know, yeah, we got to guard our hearts. Like Ponsu, like he says, you know, he doesn't go to gyms. And, you know, he knows that that's an issue. Um, you know, why why play with fire? You know, can a man scoop flame into his lap and that catch on fire? Right. Yeah. I guess our uh, our sin is uh, generated in our minds before we act it out. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, all it needs is a little glance. I guess we we men, some of us, uh, have a tender propensity to uh, look at you know look at those things and um, it, it's tough. It's tough for some of us to mm -hmm. to deal with. And by the grace of God and staying in His Word, the Holy Spirit gives us the power to just. Just glance and look away. Mm -hmm. And the more we, we are in his word, the more we ask him to help us with those things, uh, I found that he does help. Mm -hmm. But we have to cooperate with the spirit. Because, uh, you know, we can ask all day long, but we don't submit our will to his. Right. But Well, it's all about knowing the word of God, too. Yeah. Um, so, so many of the guys thought that you would know. We just read that in Romans. So many uh, turning your body as living sacrifices so that you would know what his will is for your life. Yeah. So, mm. some, people, some people don't even know what God's will is. 
one scripture we see that Fat John chapter 2 verse 16 is for all that is in the world the lack of flesh the lack of eyes and the price of life is not of the father but is of the world that the lack of eyes is very important right because of we see right yeah with I first <clears throat> we see the God of Eden also. <clears throat> first step. First step Aiden and Eve he see that food. Yeah. Right. And then he just want to become. He want he, he his flesh also. We see, and then he flesh is desired to eat. And after that, he just he wants to become. Pride, right? He, he want to become rich. Let me say according to that uh, simple word, right? The way Satan tempted Adam, you become like as he, he, the word he said that word. You become like as God. It's all thing we see. The lacks of price. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we see it's all thing is of the world. Okay, so in the, the book of Romans chapter 12 said, renew your mind. We have to renew every day our mind. Yes. The lust of the eyes, it's it's if we have a hard a hard time guarding our eyes, we're gonna fall into sin in our mind and eventually lead to the actual act. But yeah, Brother Thang brought up Eve. She lusted after she saw the fruit and she desired it. It says, King David saw Bathsheba, he lusted and desired. And so for us too, you think about walk and go to the mall with no intention to buy anything. And then you start seeing things. Then all of a sudden you want, you want things. That's why we have commercials today. Commercials are targeting us to buy things through the eyes they're showing you things oh i could use one of those when you had no intention of buying it so yes it's important to guard our eyes but this topic is uh it's profound um it's something that a lot of us like i said a lot of us men deal with mm -hmm. some more than others um you know it can be a weakness but uh, just staying like uh, Brother Thang mentioned, uh, staying in his work, mm -hmm. being convicted by the, by the Spirit, and uh, asking asking him to help with those kind of things. I yes, I um, my wife uh, actually uh, she does this. Uh, she has you know we we all recognize certain weaknesses, certain. Um, you know uh, shortcomings in our in our in our, our beings in our hearts and yes she she would ask him and uh, she says yeah he's helped me so uh, I, I do that too I ask him to help me with some of the mm -hmm. propensities that I have and he does he does help you uh, he, he brings the word to bear on you uh, he convicts you just like the uh, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would do yes um, so yeah, it's, it's something that, yeah, it, it's a battle. It's a battle in the mind. It's a battle with our, with our, in the world, with our eyes, with the things that, you know, like you said, commercials are focused on that to get us to separate us from our money, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from what God gives us. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's an ongoing thing. And, uh, it's good to have men, you know, encourage each other and pray for each other. That's that's huge. Um, that's one of the things I enjoy about BSF and, and any group that you have godly men uh, encouraging you and, and uh, helping you focus on, on his word. And, and uh, yeah, Daryl has been a big part of that in our, in our BSF group. He's, he's always got, he's always got a scripture for, 
whatever we're talking about. I mean, it's on the fly too. You know, it's not like he prepares anything. He just boom comes up with it, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm I admire him. I'm impressed with him when he does that. Uh, God Composi. <laughs> So uh, no, it's uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to to join uh, tonight, and I pray that uh, I hear you guys join uh, gather every every Tuesday. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll try to try to do that. Try to be with here be here with you. Thank you. Yeah, you're you're absolutely welcome. Yeah, brother Joe. A couple more members also too. They're not they're absent tonight. But. Yeah. Yeah, he, Brother Daryl shared James 5.16. He says that you guys were talking about that. So that was, he opened up with that. And it was important, you know, confessing your sins to one another and praying for each other. Yes. You may be healed. Yes. Yeah, sometimes it's good to 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 admit our weaknesses to one another and pray exactly. for one another. And, and yes, the Lord will heal. And to hold yeah, each other like... accountable and, and pray for each other. Mm -hmm. We need prayer. We all need prayer. Amen. I mean, as I was reading that scripture, I was just thinking about, you know, I'm going to bring it to the group here. I get the email from Hector, and he says, I'm doing as James 5.16 says. So I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just like miraculous. That's a miraculous confirmation. But, um, but I was sharing mm -hmm. with the group, you know, I think I shared with you too, Hector, if um, – God answered all our prayers like for the last 10 days, you know, who benefits? Would it be just us or would others benefit through our prayers? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what you know, you're doing. You put, you put the whole list out there and say, I'm praying for everyone. Yeah. And uh, that's just, yeah. just what this is talking about. You know, so God answered right. all your prayers. There's benefit for them and great power for you. Mm -hmm. It says the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power. It produces wonderful results. Yeah. Amen. Amen.